In this video, we're going to go over the basics of using Dryer Master's DM510 drying control system. Um, the video is designed for people who've never used a Dryer Master before, uh, though it may also be of use to um, people who have in the past and may have over the off season forgot some of the things, so a bit of a refresher course. We're going to start real basic and we're going to assume you've never done anything with the Dryer Master. There's also going to be a second video in this series and that'll look at adjusting some of the other parameters that are available within the Dryer Master, so in a little more detail. But we'll start with the basics. So obviously the first question we have all the time is what does the Dryer Master do? Okay has a couple of benefits. So first of all, you get uh, real-time moisture information from the inlet and the outlet of the dryer. So you can always see what the moisture is going into and coming out of your dryer without you having to go out and take samples. So that information is, and it's, it's always available, so continuous, so there's no gaps in, in what you know. Um, and then what the Dryer Master does is it takes that information and can calculate what's the best discharge rate to use to get the average outlet moisture that you want. And when, when it's ready to go into automatic mode, you can put it into automatic mode and it will then control the discharge rate of the dryer automatically. Okay. Now, if you can get internet to your dryer master, you can also hook up to uh, DM Mobile. And DM Mobile is our remote access feature. So you can see the information from your drawing on your phone. And over here on the left, uh, this is an example of the dashboard that you would see on your phone. Uh, so it gives you all that information. You can also make changes to set points from your phone and you can get a text on an alarm if you set that up. So if there's an alarm happening, you get a text and then you know even though you're not at the dryer. Okay. A couple of things Dryer Master does not do. Uh, it does not change the plenum temperature. If you want to change the plenum temperature, you're going to have to do that from your dryer panel. Dryer Master does monitor the plenum temperature, but we don't change it. Um, also, if you want to start or stop your dryer, that also has to be done from your dryer panel. So, next question. How does it do what it does? Okay. So the Dryer Master has a sensor at the inlet to the dryer, <clears throat> has a sensor at the outlet to the dryer, and it feeds that information back to a control panel. And so it's able to know basically what's going into the dryer, what's coming out of the dryer, and the speed at which it goes through the dryer. So using that information, it's able to trace grain as it goes from the top to the bottom and be able to predict what the moisture will be of that grain when it comes out. And then by checking its predictions, it's able to build a model. So it always knows basically how efficiently your dryer is drying at any point in time. Okay? So using that information, it's able to figure out what's the best speed to be running at given all the grain that it knows is in the dryer. Okay? And it does that over and over and over again. So it has a full picture. And then what it's doing all the time is it's continuously updating its model based on the real information it gets from what's coming out of the dryer. So we're not using charts about how things should be. We're always comparing reality to our prediction and then adjusting the model. So one of the key things uh, with Dryer Master is the moisture sensors. So I said there's two. There's one at the inlet, one at the outlet. This is the moisture sensor. It's a fin type moisture sensor. So this fin sticks into the flow of the grain and is helping to measure the moisture of the grain. And this little nub here at the bottom, that measures the temperature of the grain. So you're getting the moisture and the temperature of the grain. And Basically, at the outlet to the dryer, we're putting it in usually into one of our um, rotary feed chutes. There's bypass versions and inline. This is one of our bypass versions. And we'll just give you a little idea of what it looks like going through there. So uh, there's a bit of a paddle wheel effect. And so it's just gradually taking the product past the sensors. About 40 to 50 bushels an hour actually goes through the chute. The rest of it just goes over the side. And there's, in this case, around here because this is a bypass version. Okay, so the information from the moisture sensors comes back to the Dryer Master panel. And the panel we've designed to be as hopefully as simple as possible. There are a number of keys, but each key really only takes you a couple of uh, levels deep into the menu. So it should be easy to find what you want to do. The key keys are mode, set point, and calibrate. So these three keys are probably the keys you're going to use every day. The other keys you're going to use much less often. Over here we have the alarms. So if there's something in alarm, one of those lights will go red. 
And then even if you're at the other side of the room, you'll be able to see that, that there is something, an alarm. And as I said before, um, you can set it up, they can send you a text on alarm if you have DM Mobile set up. Over here is the mode uh, lights, and these are green. And we'll go into a little more detail as we go through the, the video on what each of these do. And the final thing I want to talk about is just the, the cancel key. So the cancel key is, I guess, its name a cancel key, um, but it also works kind of as a back button. So wherever you are in the Dryer Mastery menus, if you want to get back to the main screen, just keep hitting cancel. And also, if there's an alarm, you just hit cancel as well, and that stops the, uh, the alarm noise. With every Dryer Master system, you get two laminated guides, and this is to help you know, help you remember how to do things. So the quick guide basically goes through every step uh, that we're going to talk about in this video and in the next video. Um, so step-by-step -step information is there. This goes into a little more detail. Uh, some of this we'll cover in the second video. So these are, these are valuable to have. You usually keep them pretty close to your dryer master panel. Okay, everything's wired up. Everything's been commissioned. We're ready to go the first time. We've never turned on the dryer master before. Let's look what happens. So you turn on the power at the bottom, the screen lights up a little bit, it takes about a minute or so to uh, load up the software. And when it does, uh, you'll see the lights will go through their little sequence of testing. And then we're gonna get um, some alarms come on because the dryer, we're gonna assume the dryer is not running at the moment. So let's see there we have the lights come on. There's our first alarm, we get canceled to cancel it. And that'll be one more. Second one, we cancel it. Okay, so we started up, the dryer is not running. So our sensors both read empty. Our dryer reads off for the rate. Uh, the drying temperature, that'll take a little time to get up to ambient. And then you also get the moisture, sorry, the moisture sensor temperature readings for the grain. Even though it's empty, it's still reading air temperature. So you're gonna get some ambient temperature there. Okay, uh, the other thing here is the uh, product icon. So here it's corn. Every product in Dryer Master is set up with a, a different uh, set of parameters and a different model. So it's important that uh, you use the right product when you're drying. And we're gonna show you, just might as well start with that. We'll show you how to change products because it's quite easy to do. Okay, so uh, they have their own settings. We just, very simple, we hit the product key and a selection of products comes up and you just either scroll down or push the number for it. And in this case, we scroll down wheat, hit enter, and now we're in wheat. Okay, and then, so always make sure that you got the right product when you're drying. Um, just because, like I said, each one has its own parameters and each one has its own model. Okay, now the dryer is running and let's look at the situation we have. So we've assumed, we've started the dryer up. We're running in local mode and I'll get to that in a second. You're gonna have the inlet moisture, the outlet moisture, the moisture set point that you want to aim for, and you've got the grain temp for the inlet, grain temp for the outlet, the speed you're running at, and the drying air temperature. Okay, so I said there's three modes that the dryer master can run in. They're local, manual, and auto. The way to know is real simple. You just look at the top here and it'll say local, manual, or auto. When it's in local, it means the rate is being set from the dryer panel. So if you're in local mode and you want to change the rate, you've got to go to the dryer panel. And we know that because the remote light is not on. If the remote light is on, that means the, the rate is being set from the dryer master panel. The two ways you can do that. You can be in manual mode, which means the operator is changing the rate from the panel. Um, that may not be a big deal in a lot of cases if, if your dryer panel is in the same room as your dryer master panel. But if your dryer panel is 100 feet away, this can be a very convenient way to change the speed of the dryer without having to go out to the panel. And then in auto mode, the dryer master itself is setting the discharge rate speed. Okay. So now it's running and we wanna change mode. So we're in local. Let's say we wanna to go to manual mode. So it's very easy to do. We just use the mode key and we select request manual, which is number one. And then you put in the speed you want to run at, and then it will adjust. Okay, so very simple. Again, one, uh, one key press, and then you're to where you want to be. So you're in manual and you want to change the speed. Okay, we're running at 85. Let's say we want to change the speed. 
Um, all you're going to do is we're going to use the set point key. We'll show you how to do that here. So you hit set point. Then you have two options. You have discharge rate or moisture set point. We'll do the discharge rate first. So we just enter a new discharge rate. There you go. Now you've changed the discharge rate on the dryer. Okay. Let's say you want to change the moisture set point. Okay. You would just hit the set point key again and go to moisture set point this time and enter a new moisture set point. And so here we've got 14.5. We'll put in 14.7. Enter. And there we've done that. So again, very easy. One button. Just pick the right one and enter your value. Now you're up and running. You're running in manual mode and then the question everybody wants to know is can I go into automatic yet or is it ready yet? Why? Because before the dryer master can go into automatic it has the ready light has to come on. Okay? And for the ready light to go green a couple of things have to happen. Three things specifically. One, there's no alarms up here. Okay, so if something's an alarm you don't want it going into automatic. The output moisture, so the outlet moisture here has to be within 2% of your set point. So we don't want it to be too far away because the dryer master would have to make really big speed changes. And then we want the output moisture to be within 2% of the predicted moisture. And you go, like, where's the predicted moisture? Very easy to find. So we just press the mode key. And number four for controller status. When we do that, we'll see the predicted and Actual is 15.4 and 15.8, so within 2%, good, we're ready. Okay, so the ready light now goes on, and we're just about ready to go to automatic. So, but there's one more thing we're going to check before we go to automatic, and we're going to look at the suggested rate. And the suggested rate is the rough idea of where the dryer master is going to be running if you switch to automatic. We suggest that you look at that and say, does that look reasonable before you go to automatic? Okay. So, for example, if you're running at a rate of 88 and the dryer master says, you know, suggest your rate is 22, that does not make any sense. I would wait longer and you want to see that suggested rate come to something that is more reasonable. In this case, we're looking 79 is the suggested rate. If we look at the outlet, it's above the set point, so it's a little too wet. So if we ran at a slower rate, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So that would be good to go to automatic. So we've looked at it, suggested rate is reasonable. So now we're going to go to automatic. And again, it's very easy to do. Just press mode, request automatic, which is number two. And then you can either enter a new uh, moisture set point, or you can just hit the cancel key to accept the one that's there. And that's what we did there. So now you'll see the rate is being changed automatically. And the dryer master will just keep controlling the rate and monitoring what's going on in the dryer. Um, as you go along. Okay, so that's how you set up and get into automatic. The other important thing to know as, as part of the key basics is how to calibrate the sensors. So we're going to start with the inlet sensor and you know we don't really want you to have to climb up all the way up here to get an inlet sample every time you want to calibrate the inlet. So the way we designed the system is a little bit different. What we want to know with the inlet is the change in the inlet. So if it goes from 24 to 22%, that's a 2% change. We want to see that 2% change. We don't really care if it's 24 or 22. So what we say is, you know, for the inlet, most people have a rough idea of what the inlet moisture is. So with you're within a point or two points um, of, of where you think it is, don't bother about changing or calibrating the inlet sensor. So for the most part, you can pretty much leave the inlet sensor alone. If you do calibrate it, the dryer master sees that as a change and will start to adjust a little bit for that. Now, um, the maximum change you can make on any one calibration, just for record, is a half a point. So if you're more than a point away, you may have to do a couple of calibrations in order to move the number to where you want it to go. And the reason for that is just to avoid somebody typing in the wrong number. You know, you type in, you know, 21 instead of uh, 27, and then it causes all kinds of problems. So we just limit it to half a point each time. So let's go through a calibration. So on the inlet, um, very simple. With, there's no calibration button here because, again, you're not actually going up and taking a sample. We're just going to assume in your head you know roughly where the inlet should be. So let's do that. So we press calibrate. It's going to have two sensors. You select inlet and enter. 
and then you press Start Calibrate, Enter. And so that's what's going to happen for the next 30 seconds. Dryer Master is going to take an average of the readings that it sees for the 30 seconds. Okay, and the idea here again is one reading one time is just one piece of information. If you take it over 30 seconds, you're getting an average. So if there's any weird readings, it'll get averaged out. Okay, and so when the 30 seconds are up, you're going to get a little calibration icon that's going to come up here. We'll just wait for that to come up. There it is. And once that's there, you can hit the calibrate button again. Press calibrate. You choose a sensor. It says inlet sample waiting. Okay, and then it has the dryer master reading. Then you put your reading in. So let's put uh, 21.8. Enter. And then what we see is we're going to see that see that it changed from 22.2 to 22, which adjusted half the distance. And that's what the dryer master will do on a calibration. We're only adjusting half the distance because again. We're looking at averages and we don't know really which number is perfect, so let's just do half each time. And that way we don't swing all over the place and we just basically stay on track. Now the outlet sensor is a little bit different. Um, this one we want to be more accurate. We can't just go on the change on this one. So there's a calibration push button, which is usually right next to the outlet sensor. And what we want to do is we're going to push that calibration button. It will start to flash green. It's going to flash green for 30 seconds. During that 30 seconds, you take a sample, a gradual sample over the 30 seconds, and you want to take enough of a sample that you can run three tests through your moisture tester. Okay? So once uh, the light stops flashing, you're done, you come back, you run your three tests. Okay. And then you take the average of those three tests and you press the calibrate button and we just do like with the inlet, um, there'll be a sample waiting, and then you enter your reading. Now, Important, why are we doing three tests? Okay, let's let's say for example, you do the three tests and you get 14.5, 14.7, and 14.9. So the question is, which one's the right number? What's your real outlet moisture? Well, the trick is, again, in drying, you're looking at averages. So just like the dryer master's taking a sample over 30 seconds, we want to take the average of what's in your bucket. So if we do three tests where we got a better chance of not having some rogue reading, we can have an average. Okay, so it's it's a good um, process to use if you can. Okay, so that's it for the real basics of how to operate a DM510. In the second video, we're going to get into um, a little bit more detail, but just knowing that should be enough to be able to go through day-to-day -day operations. If you have any questions on any of this, please feel free to give us a call at the Dryer Master Support Center. It's a toll-free number, 1-888-318-0009. Thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in the second video in this series.